I'm Lou Brutus. Noah Sebastian of Bad Omens joins me now. You look well. How you feeling? Uh, I feel good. I'm just still trying to, you know, gather my rest from getting home from tour. I just got home like a week ago. So I'm trying to, uh, you know, just sleep good and get back into my routine of being home while I'm home for like a month. Any spinal tapian moments while you were out this time? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, all good. Do you ever have any of those? Anything come to mind through the years where you thought, "Oh man, I think maybe I got into the wrong business"? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I, there's like moments for sure when I'm just like had enough on some days where the day everything's just going wrong that day. But I, uh, I have a pretty high tolerance for just dealing with shit. <laughs> essentially i have a pretty high tolerance for like effort and just troubleshooting a bad day or an, an issue i'm having with whatever's going on so um no i i'm i'm still pretty glad to be here <laughs> when you get home do you find it difficult to sleep in a bed that's not rocking gently back and forward like in a bus does it take a couple of days to transition <laughs> it's not really the bed it's just a matter of like my brain like wanting to do stuff or feeling like I need to do stuff or I need to be awake in you know six hours or am I going to get enough sleep tonight are we going to hit a bump that wakes me up and I can't go back to sleep like it's I'm more so just like wired from tour and like want to be productive like when I got home from tour I was already like working the next day because I just could not sit still but then a few days passed and I was able to just take a day to myself and you know play xbox or something do you ever collapse do you ever just have a day where you just fall into a pile and like i'm not going to any place for the next 48 hours um to to a degree like i uh it happens more so with like wanting to go like into my workspace in my studio area and like be productive there's definitely days where i'm like i just can't do that today but every day i try to like get up early and eat all day eat every like eat three meals and you know exercise at least to some degree just so uh you know i i there's like a lot of pressure i feel like for me physically to like keep my body and mind in shape to like continue to deliver the performance that i've been delivering this year on tour um and that's really important to me so i i do put like my my health first when it comes to both on tour and off tour like with exercising and eating well and stuff and some people at times I feel like have have mixed that up with like being a diva or something or like, but it's it's truly just for the show. You know what I mean? Like there's times where like I don't help load in on tour because I need to go like find food or I need to go like for a run or something. And it's like, it's, it's not as selfish as people think it is. <laughs> I would have to think that with the downtime you have before heading out on this headlining tour, your brain is already going set list what do i do and say in between these songs what are we going to play uh yep. tell me about what goes through your head before you get together with the rest of the band and your crew and sort of plot out and block out the tour and the shows um well i do like all of that before the tour even starts at my house yep. in my studio usually like i'll make the set list and i'll build the intros and the tuning tracks and stuff um and yeah, I mean, with, with this next tour coming up in particular, it's, in my opinion, like the most important tour we've ever done. Um, so I, I got started on it while we were on the, the tour we just got off of. Like any day we were in a hotel, I would like be working on the set or brainstorming like ideas for intros, trying to decide what songs we wanted to play and just like really putting as much effort into like that tour and that set as I would on like an album, you know, because it's, I want, I want people to leave that tour the one that's coming up and just be like wow I'd, i've never seen anything like that you know what i mean <laughs> i know you don't want to give away any secrets or surprises but can you give me some general ideas of what you're going to be able to do on this tour you have not been able to do in the past um yeah i definitely don't want to give away too much because i want people to very be very excited by like the production but we're just going in hard as we can as as much stuff as we can fit in these venues on these stages without like screwing over the bands that are playing before us obviously and not taking away too much space from them like we are just uh we want every song on the set list to be like its own experience and its own like 
kind of journey, you know? So like I'm every song has an intro and, and like every song has like its own special like type of production and graphic and like color scheme attached. And it's just like, it's very calculated and thought out, which is, is fun for me too. Like it's work, but I enjoy that aspect of touring and making music. So, you know, a lot of bands, at least in my experience, like you get to a certain point and like you just hire people to do all that for you and you show up and play the songs. But like, I kind of want to make it an experience just like I do when I make a record. So I just put a ton of time overthinking it and in the studio working on the set and coming up with ideas. So I would just say for anyone that's curious or listening to answer your question, like we're we're doing a bunch of stuff we've never done before as, as far as production goes. And even with the set, we're playing a very long set, playing songs we never played before live. So it's going to be uh, definitely a, a, a first time and rare experience, I think. You know, it speaks well of you that you mentioned putting thought into how much physical room opening bands would have for you on this tour, because, you know, we've all seen opening groups who literally have like a ledge to play on, like like they're mountain goats playing on the side of the Swiss Alps. Um, You know, tell me about the sorts of things that go into the planning like that, that folks might not think about we start with what the opening bands get to use for lights and sound and move on from there um i mean it's it's every tour it's kind of tiered appropriately like obviously the opening band can't have you know confetti cannons and video wall and stuff not not only because like they can't you know every band needs to like be tiered appropriately but you can't get that stuff on and off stage in 20 minutes you know so that's that's usually the main part and i think us like it feels like this just this past year we kind of just grew way faster than we've grown in like previous years of us being a band over the last six or seven years of touring um so it's like we're still very fresh to what it's like opening a tour and being the first on the bill or being second on the bill and i guess we're just like extra conscious of that now because we it's it's just like it's interesting because even outside of like the way we make music or our videos and stuff like side of touring i feel like we even bring our own like approach to in a way and like the business side of things where it's like we do things different than a lot of bands um and i don't know we just like we kind of aspire to reinvent the wheel and in all aspects of music like not just with our music but like with our touring and like the the logistics of a tour and like the the show day and the stage times like we've been on so many tours where we felt like not so many that that sounds like they were all bad but there's definitely been tours where it felt very poorly managed as far as like the stage was concerned or the set or just the whole show day schedule in general and like with us like we're hyper conscious of those things because we have been an opening band that's kind of been burned before and only had like a foot to stand in front of the drums on stage and stuff and and like you know you're you're trying to sing and all you hear is cymbals in your in your ears you know and it's just like we I think it makes the whole tour look good and it makes us as a band look good if like everyone gets to have a great show like everyone sells a bunch of merch like everyone is happy with with the tour and and with their experience on the tour and you know as a band that wants to be a you know full-time headlining band at some point i feel like you have to be conscious of that and you have to make people want to go on tour with you you know so we want the bands opening the tour to leave and be like wow they were they were really good to us you know like they gave us a green room whenever there was green rooms to spare or, or, you know, they let us use their shower if there was only one shower in the whole venue and just stuff like that, that we've always appreciated from bands headlining tours that we've opened. There were a number of interesting points in there. One is the fact that you guys have seen such enormous growth the last year or so. Do you think that's actually worked to your advantage because some bands get white hot year one and they're not quite ready for it. Whereas you guys, I think, have had a far more natural evolution like one may have seen in the music industry 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, it's, it's funny you say that. We, Me and my tour manager were just talking about that on the phone this morning, actually. We, we were... I have your phone tapped. That's what, no. <laughs> yeah, we, um, we were just talking about how, like, you know, it's, we've, I guess you could say, like, kind of blown up a little bit this year, like, to a degree. Like, there's obviously a huge spectrum of, spectrum of blowing up, but and for us it feels like we've blown up this year when this record came out uh in a new way and a much faster way and we were just talking about how like there's so much we've learned touring in the past six years that 
I feel like it would have really compromised our our shot this year, putting out this record and getting all this eyes and awareness on us if this was our first year or second year even touring, maybe third year of touring, because, you know, like we've just, every tour we reinvest so much of, you know, what net profit there is from the tour into new gear and like stuff to make us, make us sound and look better on stage and just everything we can to make the experience feel like it's elevating every time someone comes and sees us live every year, whether it's the production or like the the gear or, you know, just w whatever. There's so many things that go into it, obviously, but it, it, we were talking about that and we definitely were like acknowledge that this happened and is happening at the proper time because we have learned so much and learned from so many mistakes touring over the years that right now I feel like we're, very very dialed in and like you know it, it, one of the more standout bands at like the festival and when we go and play festivals and stuff where people like really take notice of how like well put together our live show is and how good our mix is live and you know all these little small details that amount to something greater um so yeah to answer your question i i think uh the timing was was right for sure and i think we needed the past five or six years to really get us seasoned and touring and and the etiquettes of touring and the, the logistics of touring and all the gear that you need to really put on like a show that competes with big headlining bands, you know, and all that type of stuff. And really success is not a destination per se. All any level of success gets you is a higher, more elevated set of problems and challenges to <laughs> overcome to make your, yeah. to, you know, sort of heighten your success. It, it, that's about right, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's we've noticed that too. Like it's it's like that old saying like mo money mo problems, you know? Yeah. Like <laughs> there's there's so much more than ever to manage now and um you know, we do a good job of doing that with like what what budgets and what crew and like what resources we have where like everyone's typically doing more than one job. Like I'm not just I don't get handed the mic every day before a show and that's the first time I'm on stage playing. It's like I'm this past year i've been like pinning lights i design our light show like you know our our guitarist jolly it's like doubling as a guitar tech on a tour where our guitar tech couldn't come or we didn't have room like we're all just like multitasking every day and this tour coming up is the first one where we have made a conscious effort to make sure that we're not like understaffed and we're not overwhelmed with stuff to do on a day-to-day -day basis so that you know we in the band can just do a good job performing because it is exhausting like you know, working for two hours before doors, like before sound checks, setting up gear, building lights or whatever, and doing all this. And then like in an hour and a half, you have to play. And you're like, I feel like I just played twice, you know? <laughs> so with this tour, you know, we're, we're trying to be better at not spreading ourselves so thin so that we can feel energized every night and put on the best show we can as performers as well. And, you know, those problems can be exasperated of late. I, I think it's fairly common knowledge that um, basically everybody's out on the road now, which means the high tech crew people in the industry are stretched thin. There's not enough buses to go around. There's not enough lights to rent. And, you know, how much is that kind of stuff figured into uh, what you guys have dealt with? uh that's all true that's all very true and th those are like the type of logistics I'm, that me and our tour manager matt like do every tour are, uh just together like we're on the phone at least six hours a week just like discussing like budgets and like what what can we afford to bring like can we afford to make sure everyone's like paid you know what they want to pay get paid and stuff and you know it's uh with the pandemic kind of still feeling like it's fresh off of you know the tail end of it there is everyone's trying to get back to touring still even though it's you know been like a year and yeah there's buses are very hard to find like people crew people are very hard to find and hire and and sometimes when you do they aren't very good at their job <laughs> and like you know there's there's it's a lot for sure but like i said earlier like me and me and matt and, and all of us honestly we all have a very high uh tolerance for you know hard work and effort and just kind of bullshit uh, so that, that plays in our favor a lot when, you know, you think about people that have to, you know, you know, go and maybe work at an auto body repair shop at 5 a.m. every morning and have, have so much, so much of a harder day, uh, than we do. And we're out here complaining about having to 
you know, set up some guitars for an hour every day or something like it. We, we try to just, you know, keep ourselves grounded and put things into perspective. That's like, this is a crazy life that we live and that we have and that, um, you know, we, we should remember that we get it, we get to play music for a living, regardless of how annoying it gets at times with little tedious details. You know, and I think most of that stuff is really only driven by the fact that most people get into playing music thinking I'll be in a band. It'll be easy. You know, like yeah. how hard could that be? It's like, Oh man, be careful what you wish for. I was just going to say, you're, you're right. It's such a small part of it is playing music compared to so much other stuff you have to do. Well, I'm very happy for the way things are going. And yeah, you've added on gigs, you've moved to larger venues in some of the places. Before I let you go, um, I would love your take on just pretend and why the reaction to this tune has been so strong. Why do you suppose? Honestly, I I think it's just a great song. <laughs> like <laughs> I, when I think of all the songs I've written in, in Bad Omen's career, I think that maybe the greatest if not one of the greatest like i just uh i don't know it's one of those things where there's there's some songs you hear that you feel like could have came out 20 years ago and and been like you know uh, a country song everyone knows today or like some song that was in a hundred movie college movies or something like there's just some songs like that that come out and i feel like just pretend is one of those like rare occasions where everything just lines up right and you know the melody and the lyrics and the the production and everything just kind of like fits so perfectly together because that's all like making music is to me is like trying to get all these different things just to, to sit in, in harmony together and peacefully like you know deliver the message of the song and, and that song in particular i think just uh just really hits scratches that itch for a lot of people where it just feels almost like something you've heard before um and yeah i don't, I don't know i uh I just I just love that song and it's it was one of the most like unorthodox songs I've ever written because I just kind of like wrote a little guitar part and then like picked up the mic and started like freestyling lyrics and melodies over it and ended up writing like the verse and the chorus for that song in a matter of like 30 minutes and it was just just kind of one of those weird things where it just kind of comes to you and like it's by the time you kind of have somewhat of a realized chorus you're like Oh my gosh, this is a really good song. <laughs> so, is, is, it, yeah. is it always that easy for you? I mean, you've got a keyboard and guitars there. Could you sit down right now and like bang out a good riff and a couple of lyrics? Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, next time we'll uh we'll we'll write something <laughs> short and fun. Yeah, you know. Definitely. But uh, uh listen, I'm really happy for the way things have panned out for you guys. It's been uh it's been fun watching the last several years, but especially the last year or two so uh I, I i hope it's everything you wanted it to be yeah it's great thank you so much man. 